you're now ready to set up the actual project for this course. So first of all, take a look at the lecture resources for this video, where you're gonna find the base.zip file, which contains the base project structure for this course. So download that to some directory you want, and then you can unzip that in your desired project folder. So I'm just gonna unpack that here. And then you're gonna have this base folder, which contains a CSS directory, JavaScript directory, and your index.html. Now the next step is to go into Sublime Text in this case, then go to File, Open Folder, and then you can open up the base folder. So you navigate into the folder, then hit Select Folder, and that's gonna open up this folder as your project. So you can now also see the sidebar here because we now have something actually opened in Sublime Text. So let's first take a look at the index.html file. So it's just a simple HTML5 page, which already includes our jQuery script, which is imported from a CDN, a content delivery network, in this case on code.jQuery.com. So it fetches the jQuery script from the jQuery website. And in this case, we're also fetching the min version. So the minified version that takes up less space. Now, when you start a project completely from scratch, you won't type this in by hand. Instead, you can just go ahead and Google jQuery CDN. It's gonna take you to the code jQuery.com website, for example. You can click on that, and then you're gonna find the necessary code snippet. In this case, we've imported the jQuery core 112.3 in the minified version. You can click on that, and it's gonna give you exactly that code snippet that you need. Now, just a quick explanation about jQuery 2. There's not actually any new functionality or anything in jQuery 2. It just takes up less space because jQuery 2 just dropped all support for Internet Explorer versions lower than version 9 so that some of the code could just be removed from the framework. So jQuery 2, if you don't really care about Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8, you can use that and it's gonna take up less space and therefore improve your page load speed just a little bit. But for the purposes of this course, we're gonna use the jQuery version one. All right, so that's how you can get that code snippet that you can put in here. And then of course, our own script.js is also imported, which lies in the JS directory. And I've also prepared a style sheet which you can find in the CSS directory, but there's not really any need for you to modify that unless you just want to for fun. But you may want to add some elements to the index.html file to then be able to also manipulate them from your jQuery code. Now what I've prepared for you is just a simple page, similar to the one you've seen, just without the form. So you have a headline, you have three boxes of different color, and then just some paragraphs down here which you could also manipulate from jQuery later on. So now when you open up the index.html file as it is now in your browser, it's gonna look something like this. So you're just gonna have your basic design, you have boxes in different colors, and you have some text here that's already made for you. So let's now dive right in and see what we can do to this page with jQuery. So let's jump back to Sublime Text. And now let's actually take a look at the script.js file that we have already created here. So what I've added here is the skeleton basically to use jQuery. So you have this dollar object which refers to jQuery. I mean like literally the dollar sign, you can also write jQuery instead and it's gonna do the same thing. But the common practice is to just use the dollar sign because it's more convenient and more concise. And then one way to enable jQuery when loading the page is to just pass in a function into these parentheses here, which is then gonna be the function that is executed when the page is ready, which means that all the elements and all the document object model is ready to be manipulated, but the images, for example, may not have been loaded yet. So that's where jQuery starts working. If jQuery were to wait until all images have loaded, it may not work 
as expected because some images are still loading after let's say five or ten seconds but the user is already trying to do something on the page which is not working yet so that's not what we want which is why jQuery goes ahead and runs once the document object model is ready to be manipulated. So inside this function you can now put your jQuery code as you like which I've already mentioned here so your jQuery goes here inside this function and now I want you to go ahead and actually uncomment this line, this piece of code that I've already prepared for you by just removing the double slash at the beginning of the line, which marks a comment. And now let's go ahead and save this. And then first of all, let's jump back to the browser and see what this does. So I have to first reload this page for you to see it again. So you can see that the red box just disappears. And once it's gone, all the other elements on the page adjust accordingly as if it has never been there. So the green and blue boxes align back to the left. So you can see that again when I reload. When it's gone, the boxes are rearranged. All right, awesome. So you've created your first animation with jQuery. Now don't worry too much about the code yet. You're gonna learn about each and every element inside this code in the coming lectures. But for now, I just want you to get an overview of the project structure. So there's no need for you to actually change the CSS file. Your main area of work is this script.js file. And you may also want to change something in the index.html file, add new elements and so on, so that you can play around with them in jQuery then. But really the most important file for you is the script.js file, which has already prepared everything for you to use jQuery. Now when starting a project from scratch, remember to first import jQuery as we've done here from a CDN for example, or you could download the JavaScript file and then include it just like we include the script.js file. So you could download this file, put it into your JS folder, and then just reference it in your index.html file just like you referenced the script.js for example. And once you've included jQuery itself, you just need to make use of the jQuery object here for which you can use the dollar shortcut and then pass in the function you want to execute once jQuery is ready to actually execute. And that's all you need to set up your project for jQuery. All right, great. So now you're ready to try out some more animations in the coming lectures. And I hope you've enjoyed this course so far. If you have any questions, you can always ask me in the discussions if something's not working for you or if you have any suggestions for how we can actually improve this course for you. So I hope you're excited about the visual effects and animations to come, and I will see you in the next lecture.